AFR Talk. You're listening to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Number to call 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840 is the number to call if you want to join the conversation. We'll get to the phones here just in a quick second. I want to finish up some excerpts from this column, this piece in Human Events, 2006, August 16 of 2006, talking about the fact, the little-known fact, that Martin Luther King Jr. and most black Americans in the civil rights eras in the civil rights era, were Republicans because it was the Republicans that stood for emancipation, that stood for equality of right, that sh- rights, that stood for liberation. It was the Democrats that were turning fire hoses on kids, blocking schoolhouse doors, starting the Ku Klux Klan. Now, um, you know, a lot of people think John F. Kennedy was a lion of the civil rights movement. Here is... A paragraph, a couple paragraphs with regard to him. Democrat President John F. Kennedy is lauded as a proponent of civil rights. However, Kennedy voted against the 1957 Civil Rights Act while he was a senator. This was the act that Dwight David Eisenhower, a Republican president, was pushing. And it was Eisenhower, uh, do not uh, forget, who actually sent troops down to Arkansas to desegregate the schools. That was a Republican president. Dwight Eisenhower, meanwhile, John F. Kennedy, is voting against the Civil Rights Act of 1957. I repeat, that's a factoid. That's the Fisher factoid of the day. Well, there's two of them. Factoid number one, Martin Luther King Jr. was a Republican. Factoid number two, JFK voted against the Civil Rights Act of 1957 that was supported by a Republican president. You know who else voted against the 1957 Civil Rights Act? Al Gore Sr. After he became president, Kennedy was opposed to the 1963 March on Washington. So what they're celebrating today, the 50th anniversary of that, JFK, John F. Kennedy, was opposed. He was opposed to the March on Washington. Not a lot of people know that. In March of 1968, while referring to Dr. King's leaving Memphis, Tennessee, after riots broke out where a teenager was killed, Democrat Senator Robert Byrd, who, as you know, was a former member of the Ku Klux Klan, and don't forget the NRA was started by Protestant Christians, evangelical Christians, to put guns in the hands of freed blacks so that they could defend themselves against Democrats, against the Ku Klux Klan. That's where the NRA got its start. Uh, Robert Byrd called Dr. King a troublemaker who starts trouble but runs like a coward after trouble is ignited. And, of course, a few weeks later, Dr. King came back to Memphis, and that's where he was assassinated on April 4, 1968. So he wasn't running from anything. Given the circumstances of that era, it is understandable why Dr. King was a Republican. It was the Republicans who fought to free blacks from slavery and amended the Constitution to grant blacks freedom in the 13th Amendment citizenship in the 14th Amendment, and the right to vote in the 15th Amendment. Republicans passed the civil rights laws of the 1860s, including the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and the Reconstruction Act of 1867 that was designed to establish a new government system in the Democrat-controlled South, one that was fair to blacks. Who did that? It was Republicans who did that. Republicans also started the NAACP. Not a lot of people know that. The NAACP was started by Republicans, by white Republicans, actually, and affirmative action with Republican President Richard Nixon's 1969 Philadelphia uh, plan. Although affirmative action now has been turned by the Democrats into an unfair quota system, affirmative action was begun by President Richard Nixon, a Republican, to counter the harm caused to blacks, listen to this, when Democrat President Woodrow Wilson in 1912 kicked all of the blacks out of federal government jobs. Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, kicked every black out of the federal government. Every black that had a job in the federal government, he booted them out of there as a Democrat. And I think, if I'm, 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 I I'm, might be mistaken on this, but I believe that had something to do with the formation of the NAACP. It arose in response to what a Democrat did in booting all the blacks out of government jobs just because of the color of their skin. All right, well, let's go to the phones. Let's um, 
begin with Yeoman in western Iowa. Yeoman, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Uh, that, that impassioned enlightenment about Republicans just makes me want to go out and register as a Republican, I do <laughs> declare. Well, um, you know, that's a lot of information that a lot of people do not know. I mean, you know, so many people have just got re even recent history completely turned upside down. Yes, and speaking of recent history, one thing I want to, uh, a couple things I want to throw in there, um, and I don't know if your listeners are aware of it, but did you know that the King family won a civil suit, a wrong, they, in, in 1999 the King family brought a wrongful death lawsuit in a Tennessee circuit court and after a month-long trial, a bunch of witnesses and everything, uh, they, uh, the verdict came back that Dr. King was assassinated by a conspiracy that included agencies of the U.S. government. Uh, that I did not know. Yeah, and the reason nobody knows that is, is you know what was going on right then and in, in that the media totally drowned it out? What's that? The O.J. Simpson trial. Well, it was going on at the same time, huh? Same time, yes. But but they, you look it up. In 1999, they won a wrongful uh, death lawsuit against the U.S. government. There was a conspiracy that put him down. And that that was a, a wrongful death suit in the death of Martin Luther King, the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And this wrongful death suit, so you're saying that they found in favor of the plaintiffs, and that the government had been involved in that conspiracy. The conspiracy included agencies of the government. All right, well, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to uh, check into that a little bit more. So anyway, I appreciate the call. Thank you uh, for that. Let us go to Charles in Columbus, Ohio. Charles, welcome to Focal Point with Brian hey, Fisher. Brian. What's on your mind? How are you? Uh, Good, Brian, how are you? You are... Uh... You mix a lot of inaccuracies with a little bit of truth, okay? Let me let me go back to the Republicans real quick because I, I want to try to draw a timeline. Now, you're correct that there were Republicans who were actually hated enslaving the black folk and was pushing to do that, but that was not all Republicans. That was a small group within the Republican Party known as the Radical Republicans. You're saying so, – so you're saying – I just want to be sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that – that there were Republicans that did support racist policies, but it was a small percentage of the Republicans. No, no, I'm saying that there were Republicans who hated slavery, who were um, who. who oh, hated so you're saying that was and, only you say that. you're saying that was only a small percentage of the Republicans? Was, yeah, they, they were known as radical Republicans. <laughs> Charles, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, Charles. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Republican Party was founded. It was founded. It was founded in 1854 to fight slavery. Oh, Every no. single wait, wait, hold it. Every single person who was a Republican in 1854 was against the institution of slavery. That's why they formed and joined the Republican Party. Let me do this real quick. Okay, let's let's go with Lincoln. Lincoln was Republican, right? Right. Okay. Now, when Lincoln was running the first time, he made some very heinous comments. First of all, he made a comment. He said that if freeing some black people will keep the union together, I'm for freeing some black people. If freeing all black people will keep the union together, I'm for freeing all black people. If freeing no black people will keep the union together, I'm for freeing no black people. That's okay? correct. That's, He's, that's that, a paraphrase, that's but he did, that, but he did say that. that. Because you're going to keep cutting me off. Let's, go, let's fast forward to the beginning of the 20th century. No, Charles, okay. I just I just agreed with you that Lincoln said that because the driving issue for Lincoln in the Civil War was the preservation of the Union. Exactly. That was the driving exactly. issue for him as the president. Exactly. But but I'm trying to paint a picture here. I'm trying to paint a picture and correct you on some of the comments you made. Now, let's fast forward to the 20th, beginning of the 20th century. No, wait, wait, wait. wait. Hold, hold, hold it. Hold, wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that I've misrepresented Abraham Lincoln in some way? Yeah. If, if somebody tells me, if somebody tells me that if they don't care, if they if freeing no black people will keep this country together, I'm for freeing no black people. All right, Charles, okay, let, let me ask you a question. Ch that. Charles, let me ask what? you one. Let me ask you one simple question. Brian, let who me... signed and who issued the Emancipation Proclamation? Excuse me. Who signed and who issued okay, okay. the Emancipation right, let's Proclamation? Deal let's deal with that. Lincoln signed it. Here's the question: If he signed it, why did that not apply to all? To, to blacks who were enslaved everywhere. 
At that point, you had four northern states, border <laughs> states, Delaware, Wait. Maryland, Kentucky, Missouri, where enslaving the black people was legal. Okay, and so, they, Charles, I, ju- I, just want, I just want to tack this down. We both agree that as a matter of historical record, it was a Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, who signed and issued the Emancipation Proclamation. It didn't apply to all blacks. That's the point. It's hypocritical. Okay, Not well, that, so, so let me, okay, but, Charles, but, let, me ask, let, let me ask this question then. Which political party pushed the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments through Congress? Which political party was that? Can I finish? Thank you. Okay, answer yeah. the question. Which political okay. party, okay. No, 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 which no, no, political party, comment, which political, you, you, Charles, let me, uh, let, you answer my question, and then you can have the remaining time. Which political party pushed through the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution? Question. Okay. Who, now, who, who was it? Uh, Brian. Which Brian political General, party? Brian, Charles, Brian. I'll, Charles, you're using up your time here. Answer my question. You can have the remaining time. Which political party pushed through the 13th, 14th, and 15th Brian, Amendments? Brian. Let me, I'll ask you again. Be a gentleman. Charles, Charles, I'm asking, uh, all I'm asking, Charles, is for you, now you're using up your time. Your time is just about gone. If you'd answered this question two minutes ago, you'd have had two minutes to rant to your heart's content. You won't answer my question. Which political party pushed through the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution? But you're not, but Brian, you're not allowing me to finish. (laughs) You're not answering my question, Charles. Charles, I made a deal with you. And you've not kept your end of the deal. I've offered you a deal. You answer my question. You can get whatever time is left. And you're the one, Charles, that would not answer my question. And so you're the one that has burned up the time that you could have had. You could have had a soapbox, be uninterrupted for two minutes, but you wouldn't answer the question. And the time, unfortunately, is gone. That's it for the first hour of Focal Point AFR Talk. Uh, You are listening to uh, Focal Point on AFR Talk. We'll be right back after the news. Stay with us.